Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and last night I spent a lot of time testing these two bad boys out, the Zyke USB 4 drive and the Acasis Thunderbolt 5 drive, and compared it to the Mac Mini M4 Pro internal SSD, and you might be surprised with the results. So let's get to it. Okay, so our first test is gonna be copying 175 gigs from the external Thunderbolt 5 Acasis enclosure to the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini M4 Pro has the 512 gigabyte SSD. And when we first started copying the file, the finder tells us, hey, this is gonna take less than a minute, 170 gigs and you can see it's cranking along at a really good speed we're getting three gigabytes per second write speeds to the mac mini but all of a sudden our speeds drop drastically and the reason is the slc cache fills up and the ssd has to switch to the slower tlc nand from that point on the mac mini is not even kicking up the fans during this transfer it's basically silent so apple is not like trying to counter it by kicking up the fans because they want you to have a nice quiet computer basically it doesn't matter the cache is filled up and now it's writing to the slower nand chip and the 512 model has less nand chips than say the the one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte. The more storage you have, the larger the cache usually is. It will sustain the high write speeds for longer. Will it still throttle? At some point, yes. But the 512 is gonna drop in speed much sooner. Now, are you transferring, you know, 100 gigs to your Mac Mini all the time? Probably not. I'm just showing you how quickly the Mac Mini's cache fills up and it throttles the speed down. And then the question is, does it do this when you're transferring data off the Mac Mini as well? We will see. And we'll just speed up the rest of this. And it took four minutes and 18 seconds. The write speed never recovered. And we're just going to look at the mini's temperatures during the transfer and it went up to about 59 centigrade so supposedly 70 centigrade is the throttling point so maybe we're not throttling and it's strictly just the cache is filled up and if we look at the temps in the acasis that has the western digital two terabyte nvme it seemed to stay pretty cool during the whole transfer not really any major change there is a little bump there up to say 48 centigrade. And of course, reading files is way less stress on the SSD than writing files. Okay, so now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna copy the 170 gigs from the Mac mini internal drive to the Acasis Thunderbolt 5 drive. And I let them cool down. I didn't do it immediately. I gave it a little time for the chips to cool down. And as you can see, the Acasis with the Western Digital is pretty fast, 4.5 we just hit. So we're moving at a good pace. It looks like it's gonna finish in under a minute, but will it slow down as well? So we're two thirds of the way through here, and so far it's been holding up pretty well. We're at 3.8 gigabytes per second, still at, you know, like four gigs a second. And just at the end, it seemed to drop off to 1.4 gigabytes per second. So obviously we have a larger cache and it only seemed to go down at the very end. So we're gonna have to try a larger file. But first we'll try the Zyk drive. But I just wanna have a quick look at the temps during the transfer and Western Digital got up to 61 Celsius and the Acasis enclosure has a fan. Now we're gonna copy from the Mac Mini to the Zyke, the same 175 gigs, and see where we wind up. And it seems to maintain the three gigabytes per second the entire time. It does not drop off at the end. So a little slower than the Acasis, but not by that much. And the Orico stayed pretty cool during the transfer, never went above 47 centigrade in the Zyke enclosure without a fan. So just to review our times here, it took Apple's SSD way longer to write the same amount of data as the two external enclosures. And the Acasis has a Western Digital NVMe in it, and the Zyke has an Orico. Both are rated around 7,000 megabytes per second. They're both PCIe 4.0, and 
The Acasis is more picky about what NVMe you put in the enclosure, whereas the Zyke I was able to use different NVMEs never seemed to be an issue. And the Orico NVMe did not work in the Acasis. It ran super slow for some reason. It's just not compatible. So if you get the Acasis enclosure, be sure to get a compatible NVMe. They have a list on their website. Okay, now we're gonna do a large file transfer of 400 gigs. We're going from the Acasas to the Mac Mini M4 Pro, 512 gig, and it's showing it's gonna take about two minutes. And I sped this way up to save us some time, but as you can see, we actually got quite a bit more data written before it started to slow down again. So it's almost twice the amount of data, which is interesting. And now it's slowing down. So it's interesting that with the larger file transfer, we actually got more data written before the speed dropped. And I also tried this with my Mac Pro, which I'm putting at the end of this video, and it's pretty surprising the difference between the Mac Mini and the old Intel Mac Pro. And a quick look at our temperatures, and it's interesting that it appears the Mac Mini heats up during the write and when it's reading. So we'll speed this up to the end, and it took about 11 minutes and 32 seconds, and you can see that peak write speed, and then it drops off a cliff. When we first started the transfer, it said two minutes, but it actually took 11.30. Ouch. And just for consistency's sake, I also did the same transfer from the Zyke drive to the Mac Mini. And the exact same thing happened. The throttle happened pretty much at the same point, And the length of time it took was about 40 seconds longer. So now we're going to copy the 400 gigs back to the Acasis enclosure and see how long it takes and when does the speed start to drop. And we got about 160 gigs again, and then the speed started to drop, which is interesting. Uh, you know, now we went from almost four gigs a second down to 1.5 gigs. And when we look at the Apple SSD temps, whoa, it's up at 65 centigrade to transfer files off the drive. I wouldn't think it would be running that hot, but it is. And the Acasis is down at 63 centigrade, but it's doing the writing. So I have a feeling that the Apple Drive is slowing down our transfers, and we'll find out soon because we're gonna go from the Acasis to the Zyke and the other way, from the Zyke to the Acasis. And we'll just speed this up to the end, and it took three minutes and 15 seconds. So now we're gonna copy from the Mini to the Zyke, 400 gigs, and to my surprise, it did not throttle, it did not slow down, it held fast like 2.5 to three gigs all the way through the transfer. And I'm not sure why this is. Um, what's weird is I ran the test again with the Acasis and the Acasis also did it almost a minute faster than it did the first time and it did not throttle. And then I did both of them again and they both throttled. Okay, now we're going to do the Zyke drive to the Acasis. And my theory is we're not going to throttle like we do when we're copying from the Mini to the Acasis. The Zyke can only read at 3000 megabytes per second at its max speed. Even though it's got the Orico that maxes out at 7000 megabytes per second, the Zyke enclosure is USB 4 and 3000 megabytes per second is about the best you're going to do. We're holding steady at a nice three gigs per second, and we'll fast forward. And at about 250 gigs, we started dropping to 1.5 gigs per second. And it took two minutes and 50 seconds. So it did slow down. And now we're gonna do the Acasis to the Zyke, same 400 gigs, and it held steady through the whole thing. It did not slow down. In fact, it sped up a little bit, almost three gigabytes per second, all the way through the transfer. And we'll just speed up to the end, two minutes and 16 seconds. So let's just go through the results here. The Acasis to the Mac Mini took 11 minutes and 30 seconds, and the Zyke to the Mini took 12.10. The Mac Mini to the Acasis took 
3 minutes and 15 seconds. The Mac Mini to the Zyke took 3 minutes and 57 seconds. The Zyke to the Acasis took 2 minutes and 50 seconds. And the Acasis to the Zyke only 2 minutes and 16 seconds. And if you look at my repeat tests, the Mac Mini to the Acasis took 2 minutes and 16 seconds. And the Mac Mini to the Zyke took 2 minutes and 35 seconds. Very strange. I mean, I can't really sum this up as to why those times are so different on the repeat tests. I made sure that Spotlight was turned off so things weren't indexing during the testing, but you know, it's sort of an anomaly. And I also did like an immediate follow-up test and the speeds dropped off the cliff because the drives were then running hot and they both throttled and it took longer than the original times. But no matter how you slice it, both the external enclosures smoked the Mac Mini in prolonged write speeds. And looking at the chart here, this is the Mac Mini, you can see the Mac Mini started writing at three gigabytes per second, but then it throttled down to under 500 for the rest of the copy and it does exactly the same thing on the next attempt. When the Acasis throttled down, it went down to 1.5 gigabytes per second. It never like really tanked, whereas the Zyke seemed to throttle less often, but when it did throttle, it went down to a much lower speed than the Acasis. But of course, it's not just the enclosures, it's also the NVMEs, where the Zyke has the Orico and the Western Digital is in the Acasis. So just for fun, I thought I'd use my 2019 Mac Pro with a Zyke drive, and I'm copying 400 gigs from the Zyke to the internal 2 terabyte Macintosh HD. And you can see it's moving along at a good clip, and it's not throttling yet. We'll see what happens and it pretty much held steady almost three gigabytes a second all the way through, no throttling at all. It did have a couple of quick dips down to a slower speed, but then picked right back up and it, the total took two minutes and 49 seconds. Now we're gonna do the 400 gigs from the Mac Pro back to the Zyke and see what happens. I know this is getting crazy, I don't know if anybody's going to watch any of this video because it is like watching paint dry, but it's interesting to see how these drives perform so differently. And the Zyke seems to be just staying at a nice steady 1.5 gigs per second, which obviously is slower than when it's connected to the Mac Mini. So it's probably not running as hot. Therefore, there's no throttling going on. It's just keeping a nice steady 1.5 gigs per second all the way to the end. Now we're gonna try the Mac Pro to the McFiver, which is an internal PCIe card in a RAID 0 with two Samsung 970 Evo Pluses and should max out the write speeds on this computer. We're getting 2.5 gigs a second as usual. Yeah, we're at a steady 2.5. And my guess is this should be our fastest transfer in the Mac Pro and it was two minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, so what have we learned through this entire process and tests is that the M4 Pro with the 512 gig SSD slows down dramatically after about 150, 160 gigs of transfer. The cache fills up and it just drops off a cliff, goes down to 500 and below megabytes per second. Whereas as long as the external drives are on the cool side, they haven't been doing some hard work before you go to do a transfer transfer, they can sustain really fast write speeds for the most part, but they also can hit a certain temperature and start to throttle. So it really just depends, you know, if you have your drives are nice and cool and then you go to make the whole transfer. But you know, if I was transferring a terabyte of data, I guarantee both those NVMEs are going to slow down. Now, what's interesting is the Mac Pro pretty much kept up with the new tech and you know it's got better cooling and it's only Thunderbolt 3 though. If you look at our fastest speeds, the Acasis to the Zyke was the fastest transfer of the 400 gigs that we got and the Mac Pro was the second fastest with 2 minutes and 40 seconds going from the internal SSD to the internal PCIe card. 
It's not like the Mac Mini is blowing it away and the 512 gig transfer of the Mac Mini is super slow. You're better off with a one terabyte or a two terabyte internal drive if you wanna roll that way. I roll with the external drive as my user account. It's been working great. I'm gonna do a video on some of the minuses of doing it, but there's very few. It's been working really well. And I can always just go, hey, I'm gonna pop in another four terabytes uh, up my user account to four terabytes or even eight terabytes if I wanted to. You know, the sky's the limit and you're not paying the Apple tax and you don't have to crack open your mini and put in some no-name company SSD in there. But you can with the base model Mac minis. You can't do it with the pros yet. And that's about it. And if you feel like trying this test out for me, it would be awesome. Somebody with a Mac Mini M4 Pro with one or two terabyte drive internally, try transferring 400 gigs to the internal drive, see how long it takes, time it, and at what point does the speed throttle down to a slower speed, and what is that slower speed? So if you feel like doing it, post it in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people would love to know the answer and I'll pin it to the top of the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help you make a decision on getting the right drive for yourself and your setup. And please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video.